brush the dogs. You. This is one of the local stray dogs. And they, um, his name is something that equivalent, it's the equivalent of donkey um, in Greek. What? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Get him brushed. Oh, a big dog. Just she is a shopping. horse. He's a horse. <laughs> <laughs> He's just I'm a horse. I like girls. I'm a donkey. Yeah, and this one's the other one. That's Stella. Oh, you're so big. Jump up on. Oh, I know it. I know it. Barks at the diesel truck. He doesn't like the diesel truck. I don't like the diesel truck, but I do like being manhandled by girls. <laughs> what, Stella? You're <laughs> Stella. There's a dog in So they clip their ears around here when they've been fixed or neutered. Um, I don't, I don't know, so they don't have to go capture them a second time. There we go. Oh, Stella got Stella! fixed too. Can you This Wait. dog is supposedly worth a ton of money. It's a, it's a hunting dog. It's some sort of a special breed, and, and someone Spindle. abandoned her here. And she's, she's so young old. too. She's only a year she's or two old. A year old. She's had puppies. She's had puppies already, but then she got fixed. We helped, we helped take the stitches out a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Are you going to bite my the, feet? Is that right? the basics. You going to bite my feet? Yeah. She says okay. It doesn't hurt. That sounds good. See, she likes it. She says you could scrub my belly with it. I don't mind. It's a free dog if anyone wants. She this wants a home in the dog. worst she way. And winter here she in Greece. So needs a home. Yeah, winter here in Greece is tough on she the dogs and cats. They have nobody to oh, feed them Stella, then. So well, here's poor Talisman missing all of her lifelines. Uh, we had them we had them di disassembled yesterday by the stainless the stainless guy. I helped him pull these out and by some absolute miracle the screws that support the braces came out. Um, which was really nice. I thought they were gonna have to be, you know, ground away, like the fair leads have had, you know, had that happen. And so we don't have any lifelines, and believe me, it feels a little weird walking around the deck. Uh, it turned out that re replacing this, these upper lifeline cables um, was probably the highest cost of the whole thing, and so we just opted not to do it until the spring. Um, and I'm having, I've drawn him up. Here's our old gates. Um, he's going to take these back with him when he leaves um, next week when he brings the, the new stuff here. I gave him one of the good stanchions to take with him to copy, and the other one's kind of destroyed, so that one's going away as well. Um, yeah, you can see I want these replaced because the, 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 you can see the cracks that are happening. And the thing that's more concerning than the cracks is actually the rust. Here, this is probably an indication of crevice corrosion occurring inside the cable. Um, so, so this, you, you know, at least these cables are are not as are not really in good shape. But I mean, for 700 euros, which is what they want for the for just the, the two upper ones, um, that's a lot of money. Uh, what really needs fixing is the stanchions for the moment and the gates. And we're upgrading. We're going to basically be using the Oyster, the newer version of the Oyster. Uh, midship gate which has cables across it instead of those swinging gates and it'll be a lot better um, you know. and later on today when the wind dies down we're gonna we're gonna start pulling the sails we're gonna pull the, the, the headsail and the mainsail out and get them flaked and folded up and put in their bags um, they say that once it starts raining in the winter and the autumn in Greece, it just doesn't stop. And so it's dry and sunny right now, and so we've decided we're not going to do any more sailing. Across the way is Cleopatra Marina, which is where our boat gets hauled. They have an absolutely monster-sized travel lift. They've got two of them, but the big one is, is capable of pulling ferries out of the water. And uh, here's somebody coming in. We've got 
good turnover of people. It's just there's very few of the, um, there's a sun sail charter boat here, but very few charters right now. It's the end of the season for the chartering operations. And most of the boats that are here are just getting, uh, preparing to be hauled. And so you see a lot of boats like that second one back, um, that, that, uh, that Bavaria, um, privately owned Bavaria. Um, that uh, doesn't have any head sole up. In fact, there's two or three that don't have any head soles. So we've got, got another week. I think we get hauled on Friday, today's Sunday. Still getting ready to head out. We, our, our, our stainless steel install had some, some issues, so the guy had to take, take all that back to the shop. Wendy's doing, doing carpets and rug cleaning and and some of our running rigging as well. She's run through the, the big wash bucket back there. And there it is. This, is. this is the light. Meanwhile, I'm responding to YouTube commenters and watching, watching the show, as it were, around here. You know, we're sitting here by ourselves, but I suspect later in the afternoon, you know, a whole bunch of boats will come in, and and there's a possibility we may have the same issue happen to us. Um, we've been lucky so far this time. One of the things that we keep seeing, <clears throat> it's a common theme, it seems, is undersized windlasses, um, and, and windlasses that are on their last legs, where they're just tripping breakers all the time. And if they're tripping breakers under normal use, uh, it means that the motor's gone bad or it's just too small for, for the size of boat that you have. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of a lot of the you know more modern boats, they're really undersizing the windlasses on them because because the people who are buying the boats don't understand that the, that the windlass is weak. Um, and it's one of the ways you save money um, when you're buying you know when you're selling new boats is to, is to, is to put some very, very small windlasses on there and, and small anchors too. Um, so you've got boats around with undersized um, windlasses and undersized anchors, undersized chain, everything about it, it's really too weak for the application. If you're here in Greece, it's all anchoring all the time. Um, you can go for years in the rest of the med without ever using your anchor, um, but that, that's not the way it goes here. Talisman, Talisman next to the huge great circle cat, and these guys are video people too, they've got a, a, a great circle YouTube channel. And I recognized them when they came in and so went over and had cocktails earlier and they're just wonderful folks. But look how small Talisman is next to that giant Lagoon 52. <laughs> <laughs> she's just a little girl, our Talisman. <laughs> she's feeling she's feeling a little worn out at the moment. I think once she gets polished back up and gets her stanchions back on, she'll be much happier. And later on. We're going out with the boys from from Accolade, you know, Super Marimu. And uh, there's Rob. Rob's the owner of that boat, and we've uh, met up with him a couple of times. We've been in um, Manganese with us, with, uh, with he and his wife Kay, and also in Corfu Town a couple of times. So um, this will be a reunion of sorts. He's in the waves. You can kind of see what happened to their mast. That's from uh, two boats being next to each other in Broly conditions, um, probably around the time of the storm. Yeah. And uh, another adjacent boat hit that mast and dented it. So, they're concerned about it. They, they had it looked at by an engineer, but still. Taking our transit log, boat docks, to the Hellenic Coast Guard, which is one step away from impossible to find. Back alley. Back alley here in Freveza. Hmm. This is this is it. We're we're out now. Changing yeah, up. once yep. we get stamped last out, chance. it's done. Yeah, last chance to stay for the winter. Time to go home. Time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want us here anyway. We have to leave for six months. So. Yeah. Time to go. Time to go. All done. All stamped out. Got to go to customs good. and now turn we, in the form. Now we go to customs and have them take our transit log and put the boat into bond, whatever that means. I think they just give us a receipt for the paperwork. We copied everything first though, so that we have our own, our own proof that we were here. Another nondescript building. It's 
came over here to see these are the boats that I don't know what's happened to them they've either been confiscated or recovered off of the off of the uh, off of the water off of the beaches but here you've got a steel boat looks like it's in relatively good condition and they just kind of dropped it here somewhere but, you know you look at a steel boat like this and it, it, it's it's if, if there's any damage at all it's probably fixable um, you know this if somebody wanted to get a cruising boat for cheap this might be the way to go SVM someone's tied a halyard to support the mast which is Probably the only thing you can do with something like that, you know, have to be have to be surveyed for sure. But you know what I mean? That's a real cruising boat right there. It's you know needs some work, some definite TLC. The steel's kind of rippled along the side, and it's probably from having it laying on its side like that. It might that might go away once it got lifted. You'd probably do some cosmetic work to it. Some rot in the steel. Bottom of the chain locker. That was probably pre existing in some blistering here. I think that they've either repaired it before or that it's starting to fail, but anyway, steel's a remarkably resilient pro uh, thing to, uh, product to work with. This is the inner Pervasive Marina. This is the marina that if you want a, a slip with laid moorings and all that sort of stuff, it's a you know, little bit better protected from the weather. The town key is not protected. Not a place to, to be but during stormy, storm type conditions. Um, and even in here it can get kind of rough. It's not a perfect place to be, but it's better. It's, it's got a seawall and everything. Um, you know, you, but you're gonna pay per night to be here by uh, quite a bit more money. We're paying about eight euros a night. I think in here you probably, you know, power and water, you probably pay quite a bit more. So this is called the Nicopolis, and it's a, uh, it's basically the original city um, of Preveza. After, after Cleopatra and Anthony lost their battle against Octavian. Octavian built the town of Preveza uh, in celebration of, the, of, his, of his victory, and that became the new capital. Um, these areas were buried, apparently, and, and recovered. Um, and you can see, you can see the buildings. This is very, very cool looking. Um, I believe this is a Christian basilica that was built a little bit later, um, once, once Christianity took root. What they've done is they've built these roofs. These are obviously modern roofs. And they built them to protect the mosaics that are on the that are on the ground. So, so that, that that's they're just there for protection. Beautiful. Oh, it's cool fish. Very well preserved. So over there is the wall. And entering and exiting the city and across the way it's kind of hard to see from this vantage point is another part of the town on the opposite hillside we extended all the way across the valley I'm pretty sure this is a continuation of the wall and this is a Roman road um, made with Huge flat stones, and there's the wall continuing on. I think the road is probably just follows the inside of the wall and 
It's used for defensive purposes. Here looks like a gutter system, water drainage, um, a sidewalk possibly. And over here, bending areas I would imagine where, um, or storage facilities. These are the Roman, these are Roman baths, Wendy tells me. She must have read the sign for it. But this is typical of what we've seen elsewhere, which is they would have a fire that, that created steam underneath the floor or in the bath itself. Um, but they effectively had heated, um, radiant floor heating in a lot of the Roman, um, Roman buildings. It was pretty typical. This is the amphitheater. Here. Just behind these walls. So, so how much of this has been rebuilt? Uh, 30, 30 years before Christian. Okay, that's when it was originally built. And they built old Nicopolis. When he wins, Antonio yes. Cleopatra, you know. Yes. <laughs> and this used it uh, for uh, play music and theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can stay 1,000 people to see. And it's the original. Everything is the original. Mm -hmm. It's stone, everything. So she says this is all original, but I, I don't oh, believe that's the case. I think this is all new. Um, but that's okay. I've, I've always kind of thought that it would be nice if they had um, if they rebuilt some of this stuff. You know, just not 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 everything for sure, but you know, you know what it looked like, and you know, you know, it, some of the places are so um, degraded that they can't. Um, they, they root, like in this case here, you've got two layers of stone been retopped at some point possibly in, in modern mortar so you pretty much figure that they've they've put this all back together in the last hundred years but still impressive because you know here you've got you've got bricks you know they've, they've fired the bricks themselves the crack in the middle of that niche niche is um, most likely from seismic activity. The, the earthquakes happen periodically around here. Again, looks like a variety of of um, more modern brick and, and older, more historic brick. A few dozen times over the years. Yeah, it's been repaired and you know, this doesn't really look like it's all that safe. <laughs> to the stadium, to the amphitheater. She was mentioning that the rooms are used for musicians to tune their instruments and, and, uh, and prepare. The scaffolding is here mostly just to support the structure and make sure that it doesn't, doesn't collapse, and it's not stable. This is 320, the death of Alexander.
engine isn't great. Got enough oopsies. This is the main timeline. Julius Caesar imposed, imposes dictatorship, defeats Pompey. Battle of Philippi, victory of Octavian and Mark Anthony against assassins of Julius Caesar, Brutus, and Callius. Cassius, rather. And then here, this is the big one, the naval battle of Actium. Octavian defeats the fleet of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. I guess I just found them in the, in the dirt. Unbelievable architecture and, and sculpturing. And this stuff is all laid in. Marcus Aurelius. Doesn't exactly look like Russell Crowe. They had iron, obviously, by the 6th century AD. Basilica, your glasswork, additional metalwork and coins. So much of this was destroyed, you know. Um, the heads were usually done as a separate sculpture, as you can see. But it was not uncommon to, to vandalize and deface the sculptures along, you know, throughout the centuries. Destroy it, and it's just, you know, it makes you sick to, to think about destruction of something that's so beautiful. It took so much work to, to build. But there's hardly a one that's in one piece. All right, well, here's our, our newly refurbished midship gates. And, you know, the, 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 the idea, I've got to get, get a knife out and cut that. But the idea here is that the lifeline is connected all the way through and secure so that it can't, it can't bend. These won't bend easily. And, um, yeah. He fixed these two by tacking um, some, some pieces of, of steel at the bottom and then grinding it down to fit. Uh, and so it's, they're, they're very, very snug in place um, and a perfect match to what we had. Here's the old ones and uh, done the exact same way. So and new, new midship gates again, same thing, just uh, nicely. Nicely installed and fabricated. And here's Accolade coming in just after their little day trip. Um, Rob's at the helm. Kay went back home to see her mom, I think. And uh, so he's got his mates with him. This is how it's done. Nice and slow. Emerald green boat is hooked on Rob's anchor, probably. Just finished getting these people unhooked from our neighbor's anchor, and now they're out there trying to do it again, driving around with their anchor on the bottom. They do not seem to understand. The further away, the better, really. So we're, one of the jobs today is to get the dinghy up and off the boat. Start by getting rid of the fuel line. Which I 
that's good. I don't, this, this little lifting thing from Davis is awful. <laughs> it really is a, a terrible design. Um, I think, I think we'll probably be okay. He says brightly. Um, yeah, let's, do, you, do we have an extra something small around? Okay, why don't you start lifting? Okay, okay, why don't you come here and hold this for me? It can come this way if, you, if it helps. Okay, got it. <laughs> Mostly got it. Just hold it off is all you need to do. more up okay that's enough okay and then very slightly down and these are the lines we use to keep the dinghy from sliding back and forth in the davits so they're just kind of the spares that we have on board. The, the idea here is to try to empty it out as much as possible um, so that when we haul it, we have to haul it up onto the foredeck because when we get hauled at the marina on the travel lift they're going to take the boat pretty far back into the yard and if the dinghy's still in the marina like in the water they're gonna charge us extra uh, to come out with a forklift and, and pick it up and bring it back. And so we, I'm really kind of trying to get, not have that happen. So we'll have to move this, some of this stuff out of the way. Well, you know the one lock doesn't work, so that, that cable's not coming off. Oh, it's not? Uh-uh, that's oh, the one of the combination. Yeah. Alrighty then. It's on there for good. I'm thinking about unbolting that pad eye and then grinding it off with a grinder eventually. But that lock works, and that's the one I'm planning on using for the for the uh, container? for the container. Why don't we get it off then before we turn the boat upside down? There you go. Just take it off. I'm just gonna put it on the back seat like we. Look at that. Girl knows how to lift something big and heavy. Maybe because the, <laughs> the clutch is still his tail off. <laughs> you have to watch about getting hooked on these spreaders. Yep. Wait, 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 hold on. Let, let it down. Okay. Back up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, one sec. Getting pulled. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, that's enough. And down. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, and down. Lightly down. Put some barkeepers, friend on this. It's one of the things we have our friends from the States bring out with us as a token <laughs> appreciation for staying on the boat. Just smuggling some barkeeper's friend. It's not easy to find broad. Well, we've got, it, got her mostly clean. All the growth on the bottom. <laughs> Put some of the bottom paint on next year, but not really. At least don't. Don't work well with bottom paint. pretty dang good. Yep, that's what happens when you leave it in the water for long periods of time. This dinghy's been used and abused over its life. Kind of like my wife. <laughs> There's the donkey. Oh, you want some food? Did you want some food? No? Oh my goodness. You must be tired. Oh, you are tired. <laughs> the dog is so funny. He gets fed a ton though. I think that he gets all the leftovers. He gets all the food.